How's it going, Kingsman? Welcome back to the Napoleonic Total War 3 Battlefield. Today, we have another 4v4. Uh, this one is going to be the cores of Murat, Davu, I believe Salt, and um, who is it else? Lons. Lons, that's it. Lons, Salt, Davu. Where's Davu? I knew, I know I saw Davu somewhere. It's me bears. There he is, Davu. So yeah, the, these cores are going to be facing off against an Austrian-Russian-UK force with Portugal, I believe, mixed in there as well. Um, this map, if you're looking at it, you know, has one central two-pointer that's kind of usually the focus of the fighting. France will advance from this side, and uh, the UK literally, or the coalition, UK included, will be on the other side. Now, there is a nice little gentle slope that the road runs along that usually one side will get or the other, and then there's a lot of fighting that usually happens on either side. You know, a lot of tree lines, a lot of, like I said, a lot of hills. You can see commanding the area. This is some nice hilly terrain. And of course, if you get the LLC, which it's very obvious that Russia and the UK and Austria are already in the center. And they probably got plenty of forces making their way down. Yeah, they're going to get there first. Unfortunately, France is going to be way behind. But, I mean, here we go. We got a lot of French uh, cavalry lining up here. Let's see what we got here. Some Dragoons, some more Dragoons, and even more Dragoons. Uh, to uh, uh, Hussar, Chasseur Cheval, to Chasseur Cheval. Um, kind of stacking up his cab, though, just a little bit. Now, it looks like he'd be trying to go for a flank in Austria, pushing up here on this left side. Uh, another Austrian in the center. And, uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a defensive battle. The French are definitely going to have to set the, the pace here. They're going to have to be the ones attacking. We do have a horse artillery that is setting up. I'm sure it's maybe going to try to light up some of this cavalry because it is not hidden. Um, but it looks like just a huge amount of... Ooh. We had Austria throwing up some of their hussars, which their hussars, guys, are quite deadly. Austria can bring some really good light cav. So they have some lancers as well. But yeah, um... Now there's a lot of like cab going back and forth while waiting for the French to roll up this road. Um, it does look like we are going to have a salt, the 13 pointer, coming in from the the right flank here. And he did bring a lot of infantry, of course, being a 13 pointer, you would expect him to. Seen a lot of line infantry. I see a little. Okay, there's some grenadiers, definitely some grenadiers in line. There's some light infantry in front. Some trilliers as well. And more light infantry. Alright, so you know, a good mixture of infantry. We are actually, looks like we may be seeing our first fight here with some carabiners and Chesser Cheval just kind of going in. I feel like this could have been executed a little bit better for the cab fight. I mean, they went straight in against some uh, Gasaris. Definitely did well, but now these Carabiners can easily get flanked by Russia's Cav. Don't take Cav fights unless you have to, guys. There's no point. I don't see a point in taking a Cav fight right now as France. There's plenty of infantry here that are going to support it. You know, beating a couple Cav units back, what's it going to do? You know? Nothing. It's going to do nothing. You may, you may, you know, break some of the Coalition Cavalry, but their infantry is already here. And they have guard units. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of guard. Holy smokes, they got a lot of guard. That's even more over here. That's, so that's all squareable. There's some light, man. There's some light infantry here. Russia's not going to be an easy uh, an easy win, at least this time around. Austria probably is going to be the one that, you know, you want to uh, fight with. Um, those, they put up some stakes, have some artillery. They're sitting way back here, though. That's... I, I hope that Austria is planning on actually pushing up here instead of staying back and letting their ally get, you know, just absolutely flanked here. Because if you look at this, there's this huge open gap right here. France can just roll in. Now, of course, if France does move in to attack, they got to watch out for Austria pushing up to flank them. Uh, Solt does have a lot of cavalry. They have um, sneaking up here on the Austrian line, some Chevaliers trying to hold this left flank.
And let's see what else we got. We got more. So Mira with the Crossiers. It's got plenty of Crossiers. At least three I see so far. Plus some Chasseur Cheval. Plus some more Crossiers. <laughs> Definitely brought plenty of it. Now we do have Lons. He's going to take a minute to get up to the fight. But he is coming. You know, just give him a little time. Just give him a little time. And it's a nice straight shot, at least for them. Oh, it's a nice straight shot all the way down. We do have Davu, interestingly enough, staying back. Um, even while Salt is pushing on this right flank, Davu is kind of staying back. I hope, I really hope, <laughs> that France is in a precarious situation right now. Um, granted, this this Davu force could push up to save Salt if Salt's getting pushed. But if Austria started pushing, oh, we have some Cav actually looking to be maybe having a fight here. No, no, not really. Uh, but no, if with Russia and Austria, they could try to pincer Salt. Uh, now Mira has some Cav. Oh, hold that thought because we do have that Cav charge actually engaging. Chasseur Cheval and some Chevaliers. But they break. I've always loved the Russian. Oh, there we go. Davu is pushing. All right. Good. Good. I was. I was like, please don't just sit there. If he sat there all game, I may not even be recording this. <laughs> I get more picky, guys, as time goes on. We do have some Austrian cavalry that broke some skirmishers. So Davu's pushing up his lines now instead. With so attacking from one side. And uh, Davu pushing up in the center. You know, this could be an excellent attack. So long as everything else doesn't go well. We have more Austrian cavalry um, pushing up here. They're going to attack some... Sh oh, that's not going to go well for France. I mean, they have reinforcing Hussars. France is probably going to break here. But they probably will break Austria with a second charge. I imagine these Hussars could do it. I believe in you. Yeah, they'll break them. And then that go there goes the Austrian cavalry. Now, Salt is pushing up, but he, as you can see, guys... Ooh, I actually see some Austrians pushing forward. Oh. Oh, man. I hope they didn't bring just a bunch of, of that, because... Unless they brought something to back it up. Please don't tell me it's just a bunch of militia. <laughs> Mira is going to laugh and then roll over all... Should, should laugh and roll over all his crossiers to Austria, if that is the case. Now, we are starting to see Russia engaging. Yes, some pretty thin... Thin lines here. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Like, yes, maximum firepower. But these guys will chew up the Imperial Guard so fast. I don't I do not like those thin lines. That is that is something you see in Napoleon Eagles, not in NTW3. Oh my goodness. Austria brought a ton of just militia. Now, there's nothing wrong with bringing a bunch of militia, so long as you have something to back it up. Um, this will stay in a fight for a decent amount of time. You're not going to be able to outshoot this as France. Holy smokes, they brought a lot of it. But actually, this would work beautifully with the Russian Guard. Imagine putting this, putting them in groups of three with Russian Guard in between those. Beautifully done. That would be beautiful, you know? But just having it all together, if you can just send in a couple heavy cav units, it will destroy this entire line in probably about 30 seconds. Now, the Imperial Guard... Not the Imperial Guard. The Russian Guard is starting to really chop up this Davu. We do have a cav charge. We're trying to go for those guns. Not going to work. A square got formed by the light infantry. We have more and more of Davu's troops pushing forward here. But we do have a charge. Not well executed because of the square supporting. That's going to break him pretty quickly here. Yeah. 
But France, you can see, guys, getting totally and absolutely shredded by the Imperial Guard. Now, they have a lot more troops than... Now, why do I keep calling them the Imperial Guard? The Russian Guard. You guys know what I mean. Um, the Russian Guard is just absolutely destroying France at this point. Now, we do have some Carabiniers. Small little unit. I wouldn't have them shooting. I would have them trying to go for a flank here. Now, the Salt should be pushing up here. This is a perfect... Perfect edge to attack. Ooh. The Imperial Guard going in against the Light of Tree. This is going to go badly for Davu. Davu is definitely going to start breaking here. He does have another Light Infantry unit he's going to throw in. But still, I mean, this is Light Infantry we're talking about, guys. This is not this is not melee-capable troops. Um, it does look like, okay, Lons is going left. The UK are on this right flank with Austria and Russia in the center. We do have a cab charge. Here we go. Cavalry going against the militia. This is probably going to be the best option. Send in Mural along this whole line. Oh man, they have artillery up right in front of the militia. What are they doing? Here we go. We got a bayonet charge. This is, this is probably going to do better than anything else. Um, interestingly enough, this, that looks a little messy. That looks very messy for France. France better capitalize. If they're sending in this many troops, they need to keep going. They need Mira to come in as well. I mean, this is going to look very, very messy for them very quick. I'm making sure I'm not missing anything else. And they, Austria does have some Grenadiers supporting their militia line. So actually, this could go terribly for Salt. Over here, did like Russia finally got broken by some grenadiers? We do have Mira sending up even more Karasier. Our men are running, sir. But this this assault by Salt is not going to go too well unless they can get some more infantry and cav support in. Um, yeah, these poor grenadiers are gonna die <laughs> very quickly. But you know, in th like it did work for a second there. It did work. And they may actually get a nice charge here by the Dragoons. Countercharged by the Lancers, but the... Uh, oh, man, they're back charging their own infantry. We have more and more cavalry engaging on the side here. Souls trying to just beat down the Austrian cavalry. This is where you start pushing in the columns. Pushing more infantry, start flanking Austria. Now, we do have a huge crossier charge. And it hits a... Russian guard square. They should probably pull off and not engage on that side. This center, guys, you can see Russia just absolutely obliterating Davu. Not looking very good for Davu in the center. This left flank, Lons, is pushing up on the UK. Uh, UK could... Uh, I don't know why they're just sitting there. I mean, I guess they could be defending, but still, like, do something. Be a little more aggressive. You have a very good army. Oh, what? Oh, we have a Salt Strike in the back lines here. And now the back charges. And this is why Militia is so concerning. Unless you have some, like, really good morale units, like Guard, or just regular lines to kind of support this. They are going to die. This is just a Chasseur Shabal, or a Hussar, sorry, that's charging. But here we go. The Hammer and Anvil. We have, oh my goodness. Austria is about to just crumble here on this flank. Look at this. Look how fast they just mass routed. We have a... Uh, ooh, a counter charge here. Some Grenadiers of Austria charging against Davu. As Alonso is taking his time, man, they need to get some support on this side. This 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 whole Davu assault is just almost broken. Now they're gonna get a cap charge off on those Grenadiers over here. This flake constantly rolling back. We got the 46th charging in here. Oh boy. This is not looking too good anymore for for the coalition. However, they are winning in oh man, the UK, what are you doing? <laughs> Do something. Send reserves, send something. They're just sitting here. 
with the squares, man. Our men are running for. Unless they went to like, I don't know, it's Britain, so right? They maybe went and took a tea break and just left their lines, put a square just in case, put units to defend their back. I don't know. <laughs> I kid, I kid, obviously. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, Austria has not fallen back yet. I really thought they would pull back their lines quite a bit more. Now, Austria is pushing over more infantry, but I'm surprised they have not. Ooh. Oh, artillery, getting the general. That was a very dis, uh, purposeful getting Murat. Not going to matter. It's out of all the generals, Murat is definitely the one to, uh, you know, go for. This house still garrisoned by the coalition. Lawn seems to be going for a little bit more of a flank, which honestly, not a bad idea because the UK are kind of like inviting it with a, I'll call this the noob triangle instead of a noob box. <laughs> Like, you gotta choose somewhere. If the UK pushed out very aggressively, they could smash through Lons' center. You know, like, Lons has nothing here. They could push up, use this as an angle. Austria has your flank protected. Push up here. Use the road. Get some of those reserves, some of the cab, whatever, and then push up. You could destroy Lons' his first attack, and the rest of it's in the forest. Now, of course, it is hidden. Well, not all of it's hidden. Some of it's hidden. Our men are running for France is still pushing forward. They're trying to outshoot this massive... Uh, ooh! Beautiful cab charge here. Once again against Austria. And Austria is just struggling. Now, I do see Salt running out of men. They definitely are running low. Lons has the most. Davout's basically gone. So the Coalition still have a very, very good uh, chance of winning. Oh... What is going on? What's the UK doing? Ah, <laughs> uh, the UK needs to do something more. They're just kind of being super defensive. Russian guard has kind of stood their ground. I, I said they seem to not be able to readjust their line, which seems to be what's hurting them. They don't know how to readjust their line. They're just kind of keeping their line there instead of readjusting. Um, they obviously have to fix something. There's some massive gaps in their line. There's some flanks being exploited. And the UK still have barely engaged. It's kind of hung back this whole time. Um, Lons actually... I mean, they're winning over here against the Coalition. Lons is not engaged yet. If Lons can wait to see what the decisive action is here, you know, huge service, and then they can just take on the UK together and just obliterate them, which is probably what's going to happen. Um, now, that being said, Austria still has plenty of troops. However, he isn't really readjusting them to face the onslaught of... France, because France is pushing over here by the guns, and there's a whole bunch of troops sitting over here on the left flank against some cav. They need to readjust, consolidate their troops in the center, push more of this infantry that's right here into the center line. I mean, this is where the French are attacking. You can see the attack is going this direction. Yeah, I mean, the UK have so many troops just sitting here. Peel off some of them. If you're just going to stare at the enemy, peel off some to help out your ally. Your ally is dying, like, very, very quickly here. Against a very... Like, at this point, the, the numbers are almost even, but for a little while there, France was definitely outnumbered. It's looking pretty messy, though. I mean, it's very beautiful. Wow, this is looking like utter chaos. There's cavalry, infantry everywhere. There's flashes of musket fire all over the place. Austria is still alive over here, guys. Sult is trying their best to beat them off. Let's 
some more bayonet charges. We got some infantry supporting the flank here. The guard's still holding. Like, peel this, these two large units off and at least string them along here so you can get a flank on them and then keep the small units next to LOC. Like, your whole line is facing four units, five units that aren't even engaging you, and then the rest of Salt is, or Lance is pushing up, and you have one poor unit being told to defend the entirety of the line. Our men are running, sir. Austria is still holding, man. I don't know if this is both Austria's and this is part of Austria and part of Austria. This is two Austrian armies. But Austria has been doing their best to try to hold against Amira and Solt. So a lot of high points on the field. 9 plus 13, you know, that's 21 points that they have been trying to fight against. Man, <laughs> the UK have, I, I, I feel bad. I'm not trying to tear into the UK and like talk bad about them. I'm really not. Yeah, I'm just trying to give some commentary about what they could do different. So if you're ever in this situation, I guess you could do it. But it does feel like the UK is not really doing a whole lot this game. I mean, they, I guess, I guess in a certain way they have, you know, taken up a lot of nine point launches resources because they are advancing on the UK but it'd be so easy to destroy the UK they keep just like pulling closer and closer together into like a small little huddle of a circle Russia probably has actually done quite well in this game I'd imagine Russia's probably gotten quite a few kills Austria is still alive here guys look at this Austria is still making it salt is looking a little bit worse for wear here Ooh, Mira charging in against this cavalry. Not looking too hot for them. Now it's up to a couple of the Russians with all the UK. Yeah. Our men are running for. So now, now the UK is readjusting over here, but they're leaving a flank open, and here comes Lons. Nothing to defend that flank. UK are going to get charged here by Lons as well. And the UK has some decent shooting too, guys. It's... It's turned into, besides a couple Austrian troops, it has turned into a last defense for uh, the UK. Sort of. I mean, they have a couple Russian units that are kind of helping defend, but they've turned into an Alamo. Oh my gosh, they're just going to get shredded by artillery now. Our men are running for yeah, this is not the uh, ending you would want. It's the ending that you need, though. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Mira going against Russia, trying to beat back. I mean, Russia really, really hurt them quite a bit. Like I said, Russia definitely was... Ooh, they broke. The Cav broke those crosshairs. Plenty of Grenadiers to be able to uh, assault this LOC. I mean, these guys are getting shot from every direction at this point. This is going to be hugely demoralizing for these troops trying to fight... A losing battle against France. I think the problem was they banked so much in the LLC to defend them, and they just played around the LLC so much that when they had you know allies who were out away from it, because obviously you can't just sit around the whole LLC. You're gonna have to fight out somewhere. 
the allies wouldn't react to their their other ally. The coalition wouldn't react when their ally was getting just absolutely destroyed by Murat and Salt. Oh, we got an edge. We got a flank. Chaos still. I mean, there's still a small segment of Austrians here out in this bloody field. Oh, we got some cavalry charging in over here, breaking them. Definitely France played the right card here, um, going against Austria. You know, they the UK kind of sat back here. They have a lot of squares usually. Um, it was definitely a good thing that the UK wasn't, you know, anywhere else. Um, going against Austria, especially Austria bringing all that massive militia. They would not, Salt would not have been able to outshoot that um, Austrian militia, at least not after taking some heavy losses, just because they were stuck in a line fight for a long time. Using the cab, though, with some infantry, getting that shock of morale hitting the uh, Austrian militia, you saw how fast it started breaking them. And that's exactly what you have to do when you see masses of either Prussian or Austrians or HRE. You know, it's. You gotta get a shock. You're not gonna kill them. There's like 200 man units, 300 man units. It's gonna take a long time to kill that many men. You have to break their morale, break their spirit. Don't break their body, break their spirit. That's right. You can quote me on that. Kind of cool though. Look at that a little defensive. He was in the way, ruined my shot. There we go. I love these these shots, honestly. There's so much smoke, so it makes it kind of cool because you just see flashes. Ooh, we have cavalry charging in as well. And that is the beginning, or the end of the beginning. And now I think I'm just going to fast forward at this point because, yeah, there's there's one or two troops left. We have France charging in. Um, Our men are running, sir. We're going to go for the LOC. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a fun. I still enjoyed the battle. Our men Obviously, are running, sir. sometimes I'm going to, I don't know. You guys can uh, give your opinions on, you know, commentary. You're the guys, obviously, who watch it. So, you know, sometimes I will start backseat generally like i did for this battle where i start like being like okay well you could do this better you could have done this better this person's doing this and they should be doing this you know do you guys think that you know is, is that what you prefer do you guys prefer me just to narrate things as they are i feel like even though i can't help it i play this game i play this mod so much especially watching so many replays i've watched so many replays um that I can't help it but, you know, give my my take on, you know, what could be done better. Just because it, I'm still learning, guys. I'm always learning. And I'm learning best from other people's mistakes. Seeing people make mistakes is the best way for me, at least, to have learned. Um, and so that's why I usually will. It's part, partially thinking out loud, partially giving advice so that any of you who are newer to the mod wanting to play... You know, you get some advice, like, oh, well, maybe, you know, and this is obviously not just my personal advice. This is from what I've been told. When I give my take on something, usually it is not only from my own experience, but from talking with other people who've played for way longer and definitely are better, because I am by no means amazingly good at this mod. I am decent, and I have some real brain farts sometimes, 
um, when it comes to playing this game. I've done some really stupid mistakes that, on quite honestly, if I saw another player do it on a replay, I would probably really criticize them. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that also going along with replays that I do where one team does badly, it's, you know, it's okay. I'm not going to... I'm not trying to portray, you know, teams or people that play this mod as oh, so bad they should not play. No, definitely make your mistakes and play, you know. Like, real real life battles had a lot of mistakes happen. I mean, there was, there was probably, there were plenty of coalition armies that made some real, real bad mistakes. Um... Yeah, and that's just life. Like, people make mistakes in real life, too. It, the only unfortunate thing is, for them, it actually cost real lives versus, you know, this. What's what's the worst thing that cost? Like, a video game, <laughs> you know? Like, it's it's not not at all equated to the same, uh, same degree that it would be for, uh, you know, real life. Now, let me pull up the results here of this game, because I do have them. All right, so as you can see here, if I can big screen this, you have uh, on the French side, Saber with 709 for the kills, Matt with 722, uh, I am Razor with 2299, holy cow, I feel like there's some farming involved, I just have this feeling, <laughs> Dumpy with 547, on the other side you have Watts with 543, uh, Victor with 642, uh, Dino with 1242, and Russia with 1000. 62 uh did very well there at the end but uh yeah that'll be it for me today guys i hope you guys enjoyed thank you all so much for joining me um as always you know <laughs> i appreciate all the support you guys give um if you're not subscribed you'd like to keep supporting my channel best ways to subscribe and just liking commenting videos you know and watching them of course that that's that that's the biggest help you can be so um, well, guys, you all stay safe. Have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you all in another video.